officially change its name this summer. Starting on Monday, more South Dakotans will be eligible to sign up for a COVID-19 vaccine. Phase 1E is the final group of Phase 1 of the statewide vaccination plan. Phase 2 allows for all South Dakotans over the age of 16 to receive the COVID-19 vaccine. To sign up for a vaccine, you must contact a COVID-19 vaccine provider, which is listed by each county, when including federal and state allocations. The DOH is estimating 34% of South Dakota's population has received at least one dose of the vaccine. A special visitor is making things better for nursing home residents still in lockdown due to COVID-19. Kettleland's Max Hofer joins us with the story. Good morning, Max. Good morning, Travis. The Good Samaritan Society in Scotland recently got a puppy to play with their residents. Her name is Gracie, and she's a three-month-old golden retriever. Dennis Grukey says that she visits his room once a day and that he likes to pet her. She's the ray of sunshine in my day. Mm -hmm. Everybody can see her. There again, yeah, it goes back to having a dog to talk to and test her and play with every now and then. Gracie is always accompanied by staff when visiting rooms. She stops by each one every day to play with the residents. Now in the next half hour, we'll revisit the nursing home and hear how she impacts other residents. Thank you, Max. If you need lunch or dinner plans next Tuesday, you may want to head to your local Culver's restaurant. On March 23rd, 10% of all proceeds at participating Culver's. Itself. It's 10 times better. It really is. Night and day. Overhead Door Company of Sioux Falls, Watertown, and Brown County, bringing quality and value to your home for over 50 years. Mark your calendars at the Kirk Carter Memorial Gun Show in Watertown. Shotguns, rifles, handguns, ammo, you'll find it all here. Over 350 tables and $7,000 in prizes given away. March 20th and 21st at the Coddington County Extension Complex. Admission only $5. What's the single worst thing about scooping your cat's litter box? Scooping your cat's litter box. That's right. Never scoop again with Litter, litter Robot. Robot. Litter Robot self-cleaning technology sifts through those dirty little clumps so you never have to scoop. And your feline friend always has a clean bed of litter. Which means your cat won't have to step on poop to go poop. The Litter Robot has been both designed and assembled right here in the USA for over 20 years. Stop scooping and order today at LitterRobot.com. The exclusive sponsor of Kettle Land this morning. The exclusive sponsor of Kettle Land this morning is SDN Communications, the region's most reliable network. Enjoy the uptime. Welcome back. The city of Chicago celebrated St. Patrick's Day by dyeing the Chicago River green Saturday morning. It's part of the city's long-standing tradition to celebrate St. Patrick's Day dating back to 1962. Although city officials said the event took place earlier than usual and was not publicized in order to prevent gathering and the spread of COVID-19. Well, very fun that they were still able to celebrate. That is an aggressive green. It is a neon-looking <laughs> green, at least from what I'm seeing right now. Well, the last time I stayed in Chicago, we stayed down near the river and got to see ice chunks floating down the river, but I would love to be there sometime to see the green of the river at St. Patrick's. Day. Yeah, I would too. Scott, <laughs> Brian, how about you? Have you seen it dyed green before? I have not. It looks, mm. uh, from the video there, Ghostbuster slime. Yes, that's, <laughs> a, that's a good way to describe it. <laughs> that it does. I was just going to ask you yeah, if you'd ever participated no. in that. No, I did not. <laughs> not I'm quite. boring. I just stay home. Like <laughs> hermit crab stay in my home. You're just doing stuff in, in the house. You got a lot do. of stuff in the house. That's right. You could you do it. Well, you know, it's been kind of that, that kind of weather lately. It has. Staying inside, doing some things indoors. Snow pack. There's the uh, map this morning. Now, this will be updated here shortly, I think within the hour. Uh, but the, the overall snow coverage uh, shrinking a little yesterday, but not a lot because eyes were in the 30s. But you can certainly see all that heavy snow, Denver up to Cheyenne and some of that mountain snow. That's going to be sticking around a while. You don't get rid of that in one or two days. But uh, certainly air in the plains will see quite a bit starting to go today and tomorrow. Uh, between just the two days alone, I think there'll be a lot disappearing. Well, especially when you get that March sunshine, you know, middle of the month, March, uh, decent sun angle, and it continues to improve. And we'll, once that sun makes an appearance, yeah, I think a lot of the snow will uh, melt rather quickly. Not all of it today, but yeah, we'll take a good portion of it away today, starting to notice a little more grass in the backyard, mm -hmm. especially where the dog and I throw the Frisbee around. Yep, it's greening up too. It is, it is. I'll see those tulips again. I wonder if I'll see them today.
You might. You'll just have to check. About 4 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> okay, if I go, I'll take a picture. Okay. <laughs> You know, you look at this. Here we go with the forecast. I tell you what, we are looking ahead to a official start of spring this weekend. And I would argue it is definitely going to feel like it. Uh, getting into today's forecast, again, sunshine. Not a lot the way in the wind field there yet, but the winds tomorrow beginning to pick up. And if you have a kite, you might want to fly it. It's going to be that kind of forecast. March is typically known for being a little windy at times and South winds tomorrow will only get stronger into Saturday. In fact, this is the uh, the number layout. These are top wind gusts here. Friday afternoon, probably 20 to 35, Aberdeen, Pier, Chamberlain. You notice Rapid City's not quite as windy, though, on Friday. But let's look at Saturday. And this actually strengthens from east to west all the way through there. And by uh, late afternoon on Saturday, Scott, if you got any yard work you're doing, hold on to your rake. <laughs> you might need yeah. to do that. I don't know if you want to fly a kite in those winds. That might be a little too much. I don't know. Maybe, well, I'll let folks decide that. But 40 mile an hour wind gust is certainly a possibility on Saturday. The only drawback there, too, the folks that are dry, uh, you know, Mobridge, Bridge, fire danger goes up every time we get this wind to blow. And uh, other folks, too, here, things will be melding quickly, if, if not already gone by tomorrow, uh, Saturday into Sunday. But today, highs in the 40s, Scott. Highs in the 40s. We'll see some numbers pushing 50. We have here coming in at 48, 42, Rapid City. 49 today in Aberdeen, 50 in Mobridge, and 50 in Buffalo. That's the area that has really skipped out on much of the precipitation over the past uh, several weeks. Temperatures tonight falling to the 20s, and then for tomorrow, numbers will be a little warmer. Temperatures in the 40s and 50s. We'll see what we can do about getting some areas to 60. 59 in Mobridge, 64 degrees in Buffalo. And here's that seven-day forecast. 50s come in, middle to upper 50s for the weekend, and then we'll watch that storm system early in next week. Pretty high confidence on this one. 60% chance of rain Monday going into Tuesday. That may switch on over the snow. We'll continue to monitor that as uh, temperatures will fall to the low to middle 40s for Tuesday and Wednesday overnight lows, probably falling to the 30s by then as well. More details on the Kelo Land Live Doppler forecast coming up. In the world begins with the right questions. Have police discovered a motive? Does the president have a red line? What can voters here expect to see today? CBS This Morning. Are you ready to discover America? Today's top business news in just a moment, but first. Authorities are working to determine if the Atlanta area rampage that left eight people dead was racially motivated. The suspect in the shootings at three spas was charged yesterday with eight counts of murder. Seven of the victims in the deadly attacks are women, six are Asian. The southeast faces the threat of more severe storms today after tornadoes touched down in several states yesterday, some causing serious damage. The National Weather Service says the dangerous weather pattern is expected to head north and into the Carolinas. The Biden administration announced it will distribute $10 billion in federal funds for coronavirus testing in schools. That comes as the CDC is considering reducing guidelines for distance in classrooms to three feet, and as 18 states report at least a 10% rise in new cases. Your tax deadline is delayed. The IRS is postponing the usual April 15th deadline to May 17th. In a statement, the IRS commissioner acknowledged tough times for people and said the agency wants to do everything to help taxpayers navigate the pandemic. The delay only applies to federal taxes. State filing deadlines may be different. The FDA is recommending no one drink real water's alkaline water. While the agency investigates several cases of hepatitis among children in the Las Vegas area, all five patients were hospitalized and have since recovered. Drinking real water brand alkaline water is the only common link identified between all of these cases to date. Wall Street reaches a record high fueled by news from the Fed and a luxury shopping spree delivered by live stream. Diane King all has those stories in this morning's Money Watch. A milestone on Wall Street as the Dow crosses 33,000 for the first time ever after the Fed indicates interest rates will stay ultra low through 2023. The Dow rallied 189 points. The Nasdaq gained 53 and the S&P 500 added 11 points.
A record fine for robocallers. The government has slapped two Texas-based companies with a $225 million fine for making about 1 billion robocalls. The FCC says the companies operating under the business names Rising Eagle and J Square Telecom made the spam calls in 2019 falsely selling short-term health insurance plans. A new health care option may be coming to your workplace from Amazon. The e-commerce giant says it will be expanding its Amazon Care program to companies of all sizes. Under the program, users are able to chat virtually with a nurse or doctor, but if a situation requires in-person care, that is handled like an old-school house call with a medical professional sent to your home. And forget window shopping, Nordstrom is launching live streaming selling events today. Burberry is slated to kick things off with a virtual styling event. Store employees or brand partners will showcase certain products on video. Customers who tune in can then purchase those products in real time. And that's your CBS Money Watch report. For more, head to CBSMoneyWatch.com. At the CBS Broadcast Center, I'm Diane King-Hall. When we come back, meteorologist Scott Munt and Brian Karstens will join us with an extended look at the forecast and how a college student is putting a different twist on traditional Irish dancing. You're watching Kettle Land This Morning. We start with guaranteed lower prices every day. Then add rows of special discounts on America's top brands for even more ways to save. Like buy a king mattress for the price of a queen. Or a queen for the price of a twin is an incredibly good deal. Get a free adjustable base when you buy select Beautyrest mattresses. You've heard about it. Now try the world famous purple mattress only at Mattress Firm. Stop in and see why Mattress Firm is America's number one mattress store. Oh. Try the new valuist menu today, Taco John. Welcome back with Fast Pace Steps, Hops and Kicks. Morgan Bullock, a young woman from Virginia, has become an internet sensation after posting videos of herself doing traditional Irish dance to the beat of hip-hop music. The 21-year-old college student said she decided to post a video when her dance routine went viral with more than one million views. Ireland's deputy prime minister at the time invited Bullock to dance in Ireland as well. She says she's grateful her skills as an Irish dancer can motivate, educate, and inspire a wider audience about Irish culture. She is really good. Very impressive. I can't do any kind of basic dancing, no, so uh, no, me this either. is well beyond my level. Me either. It's fun to watch. <laughs> Scott, Brian, can you do any Irish dances? I'm no. sure our viewers would love to see that this morning. No. Nope. <laughs> and go. Now, <laughs> your turn. My turn. Don't you get anybody else to do it? No. We've got a set that you could just do that, though. Just they have to zoom out a little bit more. They can't see your feet, but it's okay. That's all right. Okay. What should we talk about? Well, should we talk about the snow a little bit? Well, the snow will be going away. We are looking at uh, warmer temperatures today. We'll start seeing more and more sunshine as compared to the past couple of days. Mm -hmm. So that will help. You know, we're talking mid-March sunshine, good sun angle to help melt this snow. We did some melting yesterday, what, 35, I think, in Sioux Falls? Yes, close to that. You know, and uh, I noticed too as uh, things were melting, I'm still convinced it's melting from the the ground up a little bit too, okay. uh, retaining a little bit of those uh, warmer temperatures from earlier in the forecast. But now, a day like today, a lot of it's going to go quickly, and then whatever's left over, um, more so on Friday. 30s uh, temperatures right now, pretty uniform out there. We haven't found a lot of fog, Scott, but no. Keep watching for maybe a couple spots here and there. A new item to bring up this morning as we discuss the possibilities of uh, another system and another chance for some folks to get some snow again. Now, we're early. This is, uh, you know, looking at a, on a Thursday. We're looking at to about a Tuesday forecast. So I will tell you that there will be changes to this path. I fully expect that. But we want to kind of paint that idea in your mind that, you know, this is one of those scenarios where, again, we'll have that possibility to convert to some heavy, wet snow. We said that last time, and things worked out for the most part. A lot of those uh, going thoughts kind of came to fruition. But the problem here, I think, is still where's the path going to go? Um, and I'm still not sold that that's necessarily as drawn there, but it will give us some time to reflect and think about that. And of course, going into the weekend, 
Temperatures very spring-like on Saturday. Look at all of these 60s. These are raw numbers. Okay. Oh, man. So you're thinking that uh, we could even be a little warmer than that? A stronger southerly wind. Mm -hmm. Hell. Yeah, northwest South Dakota, probably a few spots close to 70. Uh, maybe Faith would hit 70. Phillip might hit 70 on Saturday. Sioux Falls, upper 50s, pretty close to our matching forecast. And then Sunday morning, lows could be in the 40s or, you know, not far from that level. And then we're going to go into uh, Sunday afternoon, a lot of 50-degree weather, uh, cooling down in the west. And then that's, of course, kind of setting up our foundation for those cooler numbers next week with the rain. And then we'll see where the snow decides to go. But it's certainly windy ahead of all of that as we look at tomorrow, Scott, that south wind from Grand Forks all the way to Kansas City. I mean, it's just a southerly wind. This is a you know, classic example of what we get with the season changes. we got to you know, push the air around a little bit. And uh, the Middle West is a good place to do that. And uh, we'll see that on Saturday into Sunday. And then we'll see that system trying to organize, right? And then see where that rain and snow will go. Yeah, it, it doesn't come in here in, in, in one punch. As you saw, you know, maybe the chance here and there into western South Dakota on Sunday, but it'll start to gather itself and maybe late in the day Monday. And I, I know you mentioned yesterday of slowing the system down, uh, throwing out our chances uh, in eastern and southeastern Kevlar. I think we had that going, what, for Sunday, throwing those chances out. I think we did. I ended up doing that. It was just going dry forecast on Sunday as the system slows down and looks like it may even continue to slow down. So we'll see what happens early next week on Monday. But I think by the time we do get into Tuesday, yeah, that's a pretty good chance that we will start to see the rain and snow ramped up. So we'll continue to follow the track on that one. In the meantime, we'll be dry and warming before then. 57 Saturday, 58 on Sunday. Temperatures in the northeastern South Dakota near 60 Saturday and Sunday. This one. Kelloland Media Group, Kelloland this morning. Coming up, how the COVID-19 variants may be making things a bit more difficult to return back to normal. So just having Gracie here, she's able to, to help with that. Um, she shows love and companionship. A new puppy at the Good Samaritan Society is helping residents in isolation. Kelloland's Max Hofer has that story coming up. Good morning and welcome to Kelloland this morning. Thanks for waking up with us. Police in Aberdeen made a drug bust on Tuesday. A drug dog hinted there was a need to search a vehicle during a traffic stop. Police uncovered a pound of meth, THC wax, and a handgun with several extended magazines. Officers also found more than $6,000 cash. Charges are pending against two people who were in the car. Some big news from South Dakota's COVID-19 vaccine rollout. Starting Monday, the state will start vaccinating people in Group 1E. This includes fire service personnel and other critical infrastructure workers. South Dakota Health Secretary Kim Elsom Risden says the state was able to move to this group thanks to an increase in vaccine supply. Encourage people to go to the website to find more information on those critical workers. And if you fall into those, those categories, um, please uh, book your appointment so that uh, you can become vaccinated. Malsom Risden also says even more pharmacies are helping to distribute the vaccine through the federal retail pharmacy program, including some Walgreens locations. She also said the state is confident it will be able to meet President Biden's goal that all adults be eligible for vaccination by May 1st. Well, turning to weather now, the temperature is climbing and snow is melting. Let's check in on the forecast with meteorologist Brian Carstens. That is correct. We are melting snow uh, today. I think in the forecast temperatures already this morning hovering around freezing in Sioux Falls. 33 in Mitchell, 34 at Pier and 28 degrees in Rapid City. So fairly mild start. So far, the fog issue is not too much. And we're expecting partly cloudy skies today. We do have, though, clouds in the short-term forecast in winter in Chamberlain. Even over to Huron and Sioux Falls, we've had a few of those clouds overnight. But I do expect them to thin. We'll have more details on weather coming up in just a few minutes. Thanks, Brian. As stimulus checks start to hit people's bank accounts, the president and CEO of the Greater Sioux Falls Chamber of Commerce hopes this money will help build on the region's economy. I get to work with Chamber of Commerce executives across the country, and I haven't found one I'd trade places with right now. We are in a hot economic environment, for sure. Um, and so I, I find the future to be very, very bright. To read more about the impact this latest round of stimulus checks may have on the local economy, 
Head to these Kalalea.com originals by Eric Mayer on our website right now. One marketing research company is projecting an estimated $600 million in cash will be coming to families in Sioux Falls who qualify for the American Rescue Plan Act. According to Marshall Marketing, an estimated 46,000 people listed as single households will be collecting nearly $92 million in Sioux Falls. Meanwhile, an estimated 117,000 married households are expected to collect more than $514 million. People still found ways to celebrate together for St. Patrick's Day despite the pandemic. Touch Mark at All Saints Retirement Community help pub crawl on campus for its residents and some guests. In the past, the event was held downtown, but it was canceled last year because of the pandemic. While it's still not quite safe enough for us to feel confident going out and about on a pub crawl downtown, we do feel very confident in inviting in a handful of guests to take part in our own pub crawl here throughout our Phillips Way neighborhood. Kelly says 98% of residents are vaccinated against COVID-19. There will be a new look to this year's Class B State Boys Basketball Tournament in Aberdeen. Fans who head to Wax Arena will be required to wear masks and social distancing will be encouraged. Following every game, fans will be asked to leave before the next game's fans enter the arena. You can read all about the other changes and hear from the tournament manager by visiting this Kelloland.com original online now. Here on Watertown and Sioux Falls hosted the girls' state high school basketball tournaments last weekend. Now here on in Watertown are two of the hot spots in the state when it comes to new COVID cases. While many of us want to get back to normal, Avera's chief medical officer warns it may be too soon. Dr. Michael Elliott says there are still too many things we don't know, especially when it comes to the new variants. We know that uh, the monoclonal antibody treatments don't necessarily work as well with some, against some of the viral variants. We believe the vaccines have some protection against the viral variants, but they're new and emerging, and so there's just some uncertainty. All indications are the variants do spread more easily. Last week, the South Dakota Department of Health confirmed that testing did uncover cases of the UK variant in the state. Minnesota has also confirmed the Brazilian and South African variants. When we come back, meteorologist Brian Garstens and Scott Munch will be here with a look at the forecast. But first, let's send it over to Gail King in Studio 57 in New York to find out what's coming up on CBS This Morning. Good morning to you ahead on CBS This Morning. Devastating tornadoes and violent downpours hit more than 60 million people in the South. Hear stories of survival. Plus, the area is still under a severe weather threat at this hour. Also, the NCAA basketball tournament gets underway tonight. See the extraordinary steps being taken to keep the players and the fans safe as March Madness gets a whole new COVID look. And first on CBS This Morning, you remember him, DJ D-Nice, joins us to mark the one-year anniversary of Club Quarantine. He's so good. This groundbreaking Instagram live series that kept fans very entertained during this pandemic. Can't wait to talk to him. We'll see you at 7 o'clock on the dot. Big one this March when you become a new member at Grand Falls game where you can win up to $500 free slot play. Don't let the big one get away. Sign up today. Well, welcome back to Ketherland this morning. Mm -hmm. The word spring yes. appears. Oh, on. isn't it wonderful? <laughs> I like spring. You know, <laughs> the, the one thing yesterday I was noticing, too, is the snow is melting. The collection of birds in our yard. Oh, my gosh. We had a lot of birds yesterday. Uh, all the robins are going around. Now, the blue jays, they were a little bit, they were picking on a couple of the birds. Okay. But usually they don't hang around too much longer. They're around our place in the wintertime. But it's kind of nice to see that refreshing change. And now the temperature, Scott. Getting back to spring-like levels. Yeah, it will, it will reflect more spring-like with temperatures warming to the 50s uh, for this coming weekend. And then we cool a little mm -hmm. as we do go into next week. You see our temperatures falling to near 40 degrees by Tuesday. And Tuesday's an interesting day. Another round of rain, snow coming back to the area. A lot of moisture with this one as well. Yeah, another round of moisture that will likely move some of these drought deficits again. So we get to watch and see how much that happens. But this is an excellent time of year to get moisture recharged before the farmers get busy in the fields and such. Uh, yeah, a lot of folks, that's kind of a common theme uh, to getting some moisture recharged. So we'll work on that. But yes, the temperature will go back up and down a little bit 
just like it should in the early spring. Yeah, in the month of March it usually <laughs> does. And then as we get into yeah, next week, we'll see what happens as uh, temperatures will try to return above average. In the meantime, for this morning, you know, temperatures are real close to what we had yesterday morning. Numbers are in the 20s, lower... Th Yo, what's happening? You'll get used to it. Welcome back. Residents at the Good Samaritan Society are having their moods lifted thanks to a new friend. In this morning's Positively Kettle Lamb, Max Hofer shows you a puppy whose heart is bigger than her bite. Good morning, Max. Good morning, Travis. Now, it's been a lonely year for residents at the Good Samaritan Society in Scotland. Due to the pandemic, they aren't able to have visitors except for one little puppy who's making a big impact. Residents at the Good Samaritan Society in Scotland, South Dakota, don't get many visitors during the pandemic. I haven't had a lot of visitors, no. We were on a lockdown pretty much here until a couple weeks ago. That is, except for one four-legged friend who always goes out of her way to greet them. Meet Gracie. She's a three-month-old golden retriever who stops by Dennis Grookey's room once a day. She's a good companion, dog, aren't you? Now, Gracie doesn't just wander around by herself. She's always accompanied by a staff member. Social services manager Pam Stewart is her owner. She's ready to get in the car in the morning, and she comes bounding at the door like, I'm here. She got her in January when she was only eight weeks old. She was round and roly-poly, and um, the plan was to keep her at home for a couple weeks and get to know her and then bring her on a limited basis. She came at a time of hardship for the residents. Back in November, their original dog, Hope, passed away from lymphoma. She became very instrumental in the residents' day. She had her routine where she would go to certain rooms at certain times. She, she comforted people um, when they were passing away. She comforted families. She spent time with people who were depressed. Hope was a very caring dog. Grookey says that Gracie has been a big ray of sunshine for him and his fellow residents. She's making people smile. We've had people talking who hadn't talked for a while. We've had people move in their wheelchairs who hadn't necessarily motivated their wheelchairs in a while. The companion dogs are just great to have around for uh, just to have a dog in the facility to, like me to, to talk to or break up the monotony of the day. Even after the pandemic, she'll keep tugging on heartstrings and chew toys for years to come. Any time that we can bring some some joy and some, you know, boost to their mood, we love that. Now recently, the federal government announced it's now encouraging in-person visitation for nursing homes. For more information, check out the link under this story at kelloland.com. Thank you, Max. Still to come on Kettle Land this morning, what the city of Sioux Falls is doing to help prevent snow-covered traffic lights in the future. And how construction on a new Civic Center in Rapid City was not slowed down by the winter weather. That headline and more before you head out the door. 30 cent high V fuel safeters is facing numerous drug charges. The COVID-19 vaccine will be available for all Iowa residents next month. Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds says all residents will be eligible for coronavirus vaccinations on April 5th. That is, as long as supply projections are met. Reynolds says the federal government is promising a surge in supply in late March that will enable enough vaccinations to meet much larger demand. Faculty and staff at Augustana University aren't the only ones getting their COVID-19 vaccinations. The university is working with Stanford Health to get students living in dorms vaccinated as well. They are starting to get shots in their arms now so they can be fully vaccinated before going home for summer break. Our, our teachers, our educators have been so excited to get their vaccines, rightfully so, as they have so many students that surround them each day. Uh, so we are happy to get some of the college students here today as well. And they live in congregate settings within the dorms, so they share eating areas, they share restrooms, and so on. So we want to make sure that we're keeping them safe, and we also want to get them vaccinated before they go back home. The South Dakota Department of Health announced they'll be moving to phase 1E of the vaccination rollout on Monday. That'll include fire safety personnel and other critical infrastructure workers. It's a Sioux Falls tradition, and this year it has more meaning because of the pandemic. People gathered on Phillips Avenue on Wednesday to paint a huge shamrock in the streets. 
The artists who wore green masks included Mayor Paul Tenhaken. Most years, the painting kicks off the city's St. Patrick's Day celebration. This year, the mayor says it kicks off much more than that. I think this summer is going to be an incredible year for downtown Sioux Falls. I think people, this place is going to be absolutely on fire. I know it was even this past weekend. It's people are ready, and they're ready to get out, uh, and they're ready to have fun. And so despite us uh, having to be indoors uh, and no parade, I really feel that uh, this is the beginning of the next chapter for our city, and there's a lot to be optimistic about. The celebration continued into the night when the Ark of Dreams and Falls Park were lit up green for the holiday. St. Patrick's Day 2020 fell just a few days after the coronavirus pandemic officially began. We reached out to local Irish focused businesses to see how this year is different. Check out this Kettleland.com original story online right now to learn more about the difference one year can make. This week marks a big milestone for one Brookings business. The Town & Country Shopper is celebrating 50 years of publication. Richard Griebel and Larry Ammons started the paper back in 1971. About 20,000 papers are printed each week. We started out with very little equipment and so we worked practically through the night. And uh, ended up with a 12-page paper the first time. Larry took sole ownership of the business in 1984. The paper serves about 21 towns and other surrounding areas. Ben Rifle Middle School is gearing up for its completion date this June. As construction edges closer to being finished, the school is now working on helping future students transition. Families will also have the chance to attend open houses this summer to come tour the school. If you need lunch or dinner plans next Tuesday, you may want to head to your local Culver's restaurant. On March 23rd, 10% of all proceeds at participating Culver's will go to Midwest Honor Flight. The organization helps fly veterans to Washington, D.C. to see the memorials in their honor. A lot of them are still trying to grasp onto the healing of having been to Vietnam or Korea um, and getting to be with their buddies again and just spending a day remembering, remembering those lost, remembering those they're with, and um, a little bit of healing. While flights are still postponed due to the pandemic, the Midwest Honor Flight says it's still important to fundraise to prepare for when missions can start again. We've got coin boxes to help uh, with donations, and uh, we look forward to having a lot of people out. Hopefully uh, they can um, be as giving as they are hungry. 16 Culver's locations across South Dakota, Iowa, and Minnesota will participate in the Day of Giving for Midwest Honor Flight. Construction on the new Summit Arena in Rapid City is right on schedule despite some winter weather. Construction of the $130 million project started in November of 2019. Since then, nearly 850 men and women have put in 225,000 hours working on the project. The Rushmore Plaza Civic Center will officially change its name this summer and will be completed by the end of September with events planned in October. Plenty of construction should get done today and maybe even over the weekend, Brian. Yeah, we've got some better weather for those kind of things. 45 today, Sioux Falls, mostly sunny. Aberdeen, 49. Pier, 48. Rapid City, 42. Tonight, we're going to drop back into the 20s. I think dry skies will continue. And uh, mostly clear conditions, at least in Sioux Falls at 23. Looks like stormy weather stays well next week, guys. All right, that's our time for now. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. Welcome to CBS This Morning. It is Thursday, March 18th, 2021. I'm Gail King with Anthony Mason and Tony DeCopel. Dozens of tornadoes tear through the south, causing damage across hundreds of miles. Some areas are still under threat. We'll talk with one survivor who rode out the storm by hanging onto a tree. New details on the Atlanta area spa killings, including backlash against a sheriff's office for its response to the murders. We'll show you why some experts say the attack was racially motivated. As border crossings spike, we go to Mexico to hear desperate stories from migrants seeking asylum in the United States. President Biden's Homeland Security Secretary joins us to explain why he won't call it a crisis. And March 
March Madness starts today under strict new safety protocols. See the extraordinary precautions being taken to protect players and fans from the coronavirus. Glad they get to play. We gotta be safe. But first, here's today's eye-opener. It's your world in 90 seconds. It got quiet. I'm talking about real quiet. And the next thing I know, I just hear it. All I can do is just say, Jesus, watch over me. Jesus, watch over me. A wave of storms pounding the deep south, an outbreak of tornadoes, hail, and violent thunderstorms threaten tens of millions. It's as high risk as the National Weather Service will issue. This is going to be an active 24 hour stretch. We believe that he frequented these places. A man accused of an Atlanta area mass shooting has now been charged with eight counts of murder. The question of motivation is still to be determined. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas faced tough questioning from House Republicans on the surge of migrants. We are not expelling children who will arrive unaccompanied. March Madness is back. After taking a year off because of the pandemic, the NCAA tournament is just about to get underway. All that? The two-year-old bear attacks a man and chases him along a street in Russia. According to media reports, the victim is the bear's owner. In all that matters, opponents of California Governor Gavin Newsom submitted the final batch of signatures is needed to force Newsom's recall. When she heard this, Newsom's ex-wife Kimberly Guilfoyle declared, The best is yet to come! On CBS This Morning. Ancient fragments of biblical text dating back almost 2,000 years were just found. These are the things you are to do. Speak the truth to one another. Render true and perfect justice in your gates. If I'm going down into a cave, I want to find a treasure chest or the secret to eternal life. Not a piece of paper that says, don't lie. I already knew that. Bonnie taught me that. Come on. This morning's eye-opener is presented by Progressive, making it easy to bundle insurance. And Trevor forgot to mention, they, isn't that where they found that big old basket? They found that big old basket. But the question with Barney is, how did Barney learn about it? <laughs> That's right. From Jesus. From Jesus. Absolutely true. Welcome to CBS This Morning. We're going to begin with this. The violent impact of dozens of storms that hammered communities from Texas all the way to Georgia. Terrifying scenes like this. Take a look at this. This is in Silas, Alabama. It shows how millions face danger with many now waking up to a very difficult reality this morning. And all nearly two dozen tornadoes were reported, especially in Mississippi and Alabama. And that's where our lead national correspondent David Bagno is this morning. He's in the city of Tuscaloosa. David, good morning to you. Good morning, my friend. We found one hell of a story of survival. Jennifer Patterson in her mobile home. She hears that there's a tornado approaching the Moundville area about two minutes down the road. So she knows, and they tell you, you don't want to be in a mobile home when a tornado's coming. So she tries to get to her car, realizes she forgot her keys, goes back to the mobile home and realizes, I don't have time to get the keys or get in the car. So she runs behind the mobile home to the woods and holds onto a tree. Watch this. This is my living room. This is where I sit every day. Jennifer Patterson told our Birmingham affiliate CBS 42 that when she saw a storm coming toward her home, she ran into a ravine in the woods. I was down in there holding on, and that little tree right there yonder is probably the one I was holding on to. She stayed on her phone with her son as the trees collapsed around her. He was hearing his mama scream. He was hearing the sound go, and uh, you know, I was just, all I could do was just say, Jesus, watch over me, Jesus, watch over me. And then it just like, it just kept going and going and going. And finally, I just said, Jesus, take it away. And it's just like, you could hear it easing up. She said she was worried she wasn't going to survive. And now she is picking up what's left of her property. There are others in similar situations, from homes in Alabama to farms in Mississippi. <laughs> I just hear it. I hear the the tornado is just coming, and oh my God, it was it was horrible. My baby, she just crying and crying and crying. Jesus. Sabrina Hargrove says she and her child sheltered in a bathtub with her boyfriend and put a mattress on top of them, as what they believe was a tornado hit their home, blowing out the windows to the home and their vehicles. Only thing I could do is just lay there and just just wait for it to pass. Yo, get a shot of this. Blew the dog was outside when the tornado hit the home. Outside. Yes, he was outside, and only thing I could think about was, Lord, is my dog okay? Because right now the Lord has spared our lives. We're okay. So I get up, look out the back window, and he's out. All done.